Back in October last year, Microsoft introduced bookmarks to Power BI. At the time, it was in preview, and I think it's fair to say it had a few limitations. But fast forward six months, and it's now a generally available feature, and it's much improved based on feedback from users. In today's episode of the Power BI show, I'm going to revisit bookmarks along with another new feature, buttons. I'm going to show you how you can use the two together to produce a report that when published out to the Power BI service, looks and feels more like a mini app than a traditional report. Okay, so I, uh, I first looked at bookmarks back in episode two of this series. Um, that was when they were in preview. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out because I do go through what bookmarks are and how to set them up in, in quite some detail. And I also show you how you can use bookmarks to build a PowerPoint-like presentation. And I won't be covering that again today in this episode. Instead, I'm gonna concentrate on how you can use the improved bookmark feature uh, along with another feature called buttons uh, to build a report that looks and feels more like an app than a report. There's quite a lot to cover, so uh, let's get over to the computer and make a start. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing in today's episode, then make sure you've got the latest update to the Power BI desktop installed on your machine. Uh, if you're on Windows 10 and you haven't done so already, then I highly recommend getting the version that's available through the Windows Store, and then that way you'll get updates installed automatically when they become available. Okay, so this is the report that we're going to be working with in today's episode. Uh, it's fairly similar to reports that we've used in previous episodes in this series and for the purposes of today's demo it's going to be restricted to, to showing sales of products uh, by stores based within Europe and, and the reasons for that will be uh, become apparent when we take a look at the second half of this video where I really get into to using uh, buttons with, book, uh, with bookmarks. I'm going to start off by looking at the button feature first of all uh, and the button feature was added with the April 2018 update to the Power BI desktop. Uh, it's fairly similar to what we've already used with images and shapes uh, to carry out an action. So, you know, in the past we've had uh, an image being used as a back button for the drill through filter function. Uh, and I've also, I think, used shapes to uh, open up a bookmark. Uh, but buttons are slightly uh, improved on that in that they have now have three states. So we have the default state of a button uh, and on hover state, and an on click state. Uh, and they just sort of add a little bit of animation to the buttons to make them uh, look and feel a bit more like what you would expect in uh, an application as opposed to a report. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the button uh, drop down in the ribbon here. Uh, as you can see, we get a set of predefined uh, images that we can use, or we have a blank one there that we can add some text to uh, for, of our own. Uh, each of the buttons you can assign one of three actions to, so uh, either uh, the back action, so uh, we've seen that in the drill through filters where you have a back button that takes you back to the call in page. Um, you can set uh, an action to open up a question and answers uh, box, or you can set the action to take you to a bookmark, a predefined bookmark. Um, most of these buttons, that action isn't set by default, um, but on the back one, the question and answers one, and the bookmark buttons, they, they have their action predefined accordingly. Uh, so let's kick off by creating a button. I'm going to, for the purpose of this, I'm going to pick the information button. Um, let's just move that over to the right hand, top right hand side there. Okay, so when we look at the visualizations pane for this, we have a set of uh, properties and for each of those you can set the properties for each of the different states so um, if I look at the icon here uh, we can set the properties for the default state of the icon uh, the on hover and the on press so let's uh, let's go ahead and do that I'm actually for the default state going to slightly lighten the color of my icon so I'll give it a light gray uh, for the on hover state I'm going to make that a slightly darker gray And for the on press state, I'm going to make it uh, sort of sort of pinky red color. Okay, so now uh, if I look at that, when I hover over it, you can see. So the default state, it's a light gray. As I hover over it, it becomes a darker gray. And then when I hold down the control key and click on it, uh, I get that ready pinky color, just to indicate that I'm clicking on the button. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to assign an action. Um, so if I go 
down to the action tab here turn that on and you see I can have one of three different actions that I can assign to that button so we can have the back uh, action that we've seen with drill through filters uh, a bookmark or question and answers and if I click on question and answers just to show you quickly what that does uh, when I click on my button here it opens up the question and answers panel I'm um, not going to go into too much detail about that because that, uh, that warrants an episode of the Power BI show on its own uh, but if I go in here I can just put in here uh, sales by region and it will generate a chart for me automatically showing me sales by region um, actually what I want to do to this for this is to assign a bookmark to it so first of all I'm going to need to create that uh, before that I do that just uh, I'm just going to switch on the selection pane and the bookmarks uh, panes uh, you can see there at the moment in the selection pane uh, my button is just labeled button that's uh, okay for now but if I've got lots and lots of buttons on the screen that's going to get fairly confusing so here's a tip uh, you can't actually rename that by double clicking as you might expect uh, but what you can do is give is rename it by going into the uh, visualizations pane for the button uh, clicking on title switching that on and then giving it some title text so if we uh, if we give that uh, call that about button Now we don't actually want the title on. Uh, unfortunately, when you turn the title off, it does actually retain that title. Um, as you can see, it's it's um, uh, it's renamed it up there in the selection pane. So we turn the title off, uh, it retains it, which is great. Now we need to create a bookmark for that. Um, so for the bookmark, I've got some I've got some predefined uh, bits on the screen for for that. I've got a uh, an about box which I've created before and a return button from the about box to close it down so let's uh, switch my about box on and the about return button and we'll save that as a bookmark so let's add that we'll double click on that and rename it about on and then if I switch those back off again so let's hide the about box and the about return button add another bookmark and we'll call that about off okay I can go back to my button and under the action we can set bookmark and set that to about on now I uh, just close these down for a second so we can go and see the report in a bit more detail again if I now hover over that click with the control key uh, my about box shows and I've got the return button there which at the moment won't do anything uh, so I need to highlight that go into visualizations and the action there uh, it's bookmark but it's set to none at the moment and we need to set that to about off so now when I click on that it switches it off Okay, so that's uh, that's a quick uh, uh, look at uh, the buttons and how they can be linked to, to bookmarks. So for the uh, the next stage, uh, we're going to look at uh, the bookmarks in a bit more detail and specifically uh, the enhancements that have been made uh, since we looked at them in the uh, second episode of this series, uh, where they were still in preview. Okay, so one of the limitations that we had with uh, bookmarks whilst it was in the preview uh, stage was that not only did it uh, record the state of the visuals but it also recorded the uh, state of uh, of your data on uh, for example your your slices and um, we'll see that if I uh, go through the about box again opening that up if I set my slicer to say uh, 2011 that's great I get my, my uh, images perhaps select on uh, the one of the bars when I click on the about screen open that up uh, it resets everything in fact actually yeah there we go uh, it resets the slicer and the the, the visuals that I've clicked on uh, and we might not always want that to be the case so fortunately uh, with the enhancements that they've added uh, one of the things is that you can now when you, you store your slicer you can say that you don't want to uh, store data along with it so let's uh, let's shut that down uh, if I go back in and look at the bookmarks pane again 
Uh, whereas before when I clicked on the ellipses, I used to have just three options of, uh, I think it was rename, delete, and update. We now have a whole extra set of options that we can tick on. Uh, and the one I was talking about just now with uh, bringing slices through and filtered data, and we can either include that or we can click on there uh, to exclude it from the uh, from the bookmark. So uh, let's take it off the about on and take it off the about off. Now when I select my slicer, uh, say it's 2011 and I click on my uh, uh, button to open up the about screen, it retains uh, the data in that slicer. If I go back again and I take a look at some of the other options there, go through those. Uh, so the data we've just uh, explained, uh, the display uh, we could actually turn that off so uh, it will it'll it won't show any of the displays that we've we've uh, retained data on in the bookmark. So uh, let's turn that off. Uh, so on the about on, if I deselect the display when I click on my information box it doesn't bring up uh, the selected visuals that I wanted. So it's basically not uh, showing uh, what I've stored in the bookmark in terms of uh, visualizations being hidden or shown. Switch that back on again, because obviously that's not what we want the action to be. Uh, uh, then I have a current page. So uh, for example, let's go to page two when I select my bookmark it should then switch back to the page that the the bookmark was stored on I can turn that off and now I go to page two and select the bookmark it doesn't go back to the page so let's select my bookmark it's not going back to page one I actually have to go back into page uh, the first page and see my about box And then we can also uh, tell it to store the properties of all the visuals or only selected visuals. Uh, and we'll see that in action uh, when I uh, do the bookmarks and buttons for page two of this report. Okay, so let's move on to, to page two, as I say. And we'll do a, a little bit more uh, complicated example of buttons and bookmarks. OK, so here we have a chart showing uh, net sales by store and it's showing all the stores in Europe. Uh, and it's a pretty cluttered chart, not very easy to read. Uh, so one way we could get around that is to split the chart into four uh, and it each showing a different quartile of uh, the overall uh, set of stores. So what I've done here is I've set up some buttons uh, which we're going to use to go to bookmarks and each bookmark will show a different quartile. Um, as you can see I've set the properties of these buttons so that when I uh, hover over them uh, we get that sort of animation effect. I've also uh, done two sets of buttons. So if I move that, uh, let's, uh, let's show that. I need to go to the selection pane. I've got a, a unselected and I've got a copy of the button which I've called selected. And that just uh, it's similar to how we did with the toggle buttons in the previous uh, bookmarks video. I, I when I click on it, uh, I'm setting, a, a, I'm hiding one uh, version of the button and showing another version of the button, and that way uh, I can sort of see which uh, which button is currently selected and which quartile I'm looking at. Okay, so let's uh, let's go and create uh, a bookmark for this and also uh, assign it to the buttons. I'll, I'll just do uh, one to show you as a demo. Uh, so let's reset that. Okay, so I've got some measures I've already set up. Uh, I use the rank X uh, to create, the, to, to rank these stores uh, according to their uh, net sales. And then I've got another measure that, that uh, uses that to create the quartiles. Uh, I'm not going to go into those in any details, uh, but they make an excellent uh, uh, feature for a DAX intent. So I may well do that in the future. Uh, but for now, just uh, take it that I have a measure that gives me the uh, different quartiles for a particular store. Uh, so perhaps if we add that on our chart, uh, we can 
go down on the visual filters so I'm just going to add that in there uh, so if we do a bookmark for the first call tile so let's set that to is and one and apply that filter now I get the uh, the stores that fall within the first call tile uh, based on net sales uh, so uh, let's bring up the bookmarks pane and uh, we now need to add that let's add that in and we'll rename that and call that quartile one and we'll assign that to uh, our button one so let's give that an action bookmark and we'll call it quartile one And now I'm going to create a bookmark uh, that shows all quartiles again, and I'm going to assign that to our reset button here. Uh, so let's go back in uh, our chart. Uh, go down to the filters, move that filter, and we we'll create another bookmark which will be show all. And we'll assign that to the reset button. Okay, so I should be able to uh, click on button one now and do the reset. Okay, so I now need to just slightly change my uh, bookmark so that I show the uh, highlighted button. Let's go back to that again. Uh, my bookmarks pane, and the selection pane. And let's uh, hide the unselected button and show the selected button. And I'm going to update uh, my quartile one bookmark. Okay. And now we see that that uh, that button's highlighted as we expected. Okay, so there's some caveats here though before we, we go on and, and uh, do the other quartiles. Um, so if I go back to page or page one of my report and select the year, so 2012 for example. See now I've selected 2012. When I reset, that's going to go back to 2011 because that was the a value of that slicer at the point I created my bookmark. Now one way to get around that would be to go in uh, to bookmarks or at least you would think and unselect data. Now when I go into, let's go back again 2012 I select my bookmark it is retaining the 2012 but now because I've um, I'm not using uh, slices the data that's coming through from slices and filters it's also not uh, not using the filter that I set up on uh, on this chart so you can see it's lost the filter that was there uh, I switch data back on and click on my bookmark now the filter is 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 being used again uh, but the slicer is also going back to what it was at the point the bookmark was created. Now one way to get around that is to use the uh, selected visuals uh, feature. So let's go back get our selection pane back up. And what I want is to actually select everything bar the year slicer. So we miss out the, the year slicer, select everything else and do an update and selected visuals only now hopefully this will work I've had, had a few issues getting this to work uh, sometimes it's easier to recreate the button uh, from scratch but let's have a try so now when I click on my button uh, let's just reset that actually 
which will go back to 2011. Uh, sales by category, let's do 2012. And now if I select the button one to get the first quartile up, hopefully, yeah, that now uh, applies the filter uh, on the visual, on the chart visual, but it doesn't bring through the value of the slicer uh, because that wasn't selected when I, uh, or it wasn't one of the selected visuals uh, when I created the bookmark or, or at least updated the bookmark. Okay, so I shall, uh, I shall go ahead now and create bookmarks uh, for each of the other three quartiles and assign those to the buttons uh, accordingly. Okay, so now you can see I've got all my bookmarks in place, uh, all my visuals. Uh, so if I just highlight my chart, uh, let's go down and have a look at the the settings for the uh, for the quartile filter. If I select quartile one, there it's got one, two, three. Four, and I can reset it back and get rid of it and you'll see all the buttons are highlighted as I select on the bookmark the buttons are highlighted uh, I've also got a little uh, text box there as well to show me which quartile I'm showing uh, so let's hide all of this and see how the report works as I click on the buttons so you can see quartile 2, quartile 3, quartile 4 and then when I click on my reset button it resets back to show all the stores and in fact I can go in and uh, let's get rid of that and go in and select a particular year so 2012 for example go back to page 2 uh, it shows there uh, store type is store year is 2012 click on the buttons and that's retained as you would expect okay so all that remains for me to do now is to publish that out to the Power BI service and we'll see how that looks in the Power BI service. Okay, so here we are, the report's been published out to the Power BI service and I've got it running full screen. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at our buttons in action now. So click on the information button uh, to bring up my about screen and then the close button to close that down again. Uh, let's go on to page two. Here we have our report showing, uh, or, uh, the chart showing uh, net sales across all the stores in Europe. Uh, as I say, it's a bit cluttered. So let's take a look at the top performing uh, stores in Europe by clicking our, our one button to bring up uh, the first quartile. And then we can look at the other end, the bottom performing stores in quartile four. Uh, click on four. And then the ones in between. And then we can reset it again uh, to show all the stores together again in the chart. And uh, perhaps I might want to take a look at just one year in particular. So let's go to 2013, for example. Back to page two. And again, we'll look at the uh, the different quartiles uh, for 2013 sales. And there we see, uh, I hope you'll agree that uh, the reports now, it, it looks and feels a little bit more like a, an app than, than just your standard report. It's got some really nice interactivity in there. Uh, and certainly the the bookmarks are have some really nice improvements to to what we had available when it was in preview and when we looked at it back in episode two that's it for today's show if you enjoyed it then please let me know by smashing that like button and maybe even leave me a comment in the comment section below if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon if you want to be notified of when i upload new content to the channel as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of the Power BI Show.